So this week on workshop tips and tricks, uh, again, I my background's in the theater business and as a carpenter. Tonight's episode is work surface alternatives for assembly, not necessarily for painting, but for assembly. Uh, typically, we're working either on a laminate counter, our workbench, or a wood board or plywood, cutting mat, or foam core, expanded PVC board, or Sintra, or a lot of people still actually do work on glass or ceramic cutting boards. Uh, the typical work surfaces, the pros, you can use tape or pins. They're readily available and inexpensive. Cons, you, you can glue things to them. Things can get stuck. They can be difficult to clean. So I now uh, pretty much do most of my assembly on sheet metal. And the pro here is I use magnets to hold parts and jigs in place. They are relatively inexpensive, very easy to find, especially if you have like a sheet metal shop in your neighborhood, go ask them for some scraps. Easy to clean. Uh, the cons, magnets love to join themselves together. And it's not typical. It's not terribly friendly for real small items. So this is for larger things that you may be building. Uh, most of us are familiar with this Micromark kit, which is basically the same thing. Uh, they kind of come with door closer magnets and it's a, it's a nice small uh, tray. I actually have one. This is what I started with. But now I uh, went over to Lowe's and got a 12 inch by 18 inch solid sheet metal pan for nine and a half bucks. You just want to make sure they're flat. And what I use are these refrigerator magnets, these rare earth magnets that you can get on Amazon. There's all kinds of different sizes and thicknesses. Uh, there are some kits of these that uh, are like variety packs. They'll come with a lot different sizes. These are typically the sizes I use. Uh, this is all in millimeters, six by one, 10 by two, et cetera. And you can see on a bunch of them, what I've done is I've used CA and actually put some uh, styrene tabs on them. And I use the tabs as a method of holding things down, which I'll show you in a second. So here for argument's sake, it's just a little trestle thing. Uh, I'm found a picture on the web. I scaled it, printed it out. I cut off at the bottom to give myself a baseline. Here's a little trick that I've been playing with and I would appreciate some input from everybody on. I cover it with, I took a piece of unbleached parchment baking paper from my wife up in the kitchen. And I have experimented with CA, styrene cement, PVA, wood glue, and things don't stick to it. It just peels right off. So I would love to hear other people's experience. And it's translucent. So you can see the plan right through it. So here you can see I'm start, I started, again, this is just a demonstration for this session. So I used the magnets to hold parts in place. And then for cross pieces, I actually stack some magnets up. <clears throat> so this is where I would do my first glue. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool with this is you can use it. They work through a cutting mat. So as long as your mat isn't too thick, the magnets hold just fine. So something to think about. Uh, for other larger objects, I went over to, I, we have a Harbor Freight. Most people do, or you can get these on Amazon. I picked up four of these magnetic welder welding pieces for six bucks. And I use these when I'm doing wall assemblies. So here you can see they're on the sheet and I use them as a backing to hold things square. They're at 90 or 45. And then I use the small magnets on the front to hold the walls in place. It works out really good for gluing up wall sections and other things. I use these when I did the uh, some of the girders for the, for the uh, elevated subway. So that's uh, kind of just an idea to think about for assembling stuff. Uh, you can get much smaller pieces, uh, obviously, uh, like say scrap sheet metal from a, a tin knocker in your area. That'd be great to, to try. 
Our tool of the week this week is trammel points. I love trammel points. Uh, I found these for like 16. They're not cheap. You can spend a lot of money on them. But basically what trammel points are is just a giant. It allows you to make a giant compass. If you're doing large radiuses on your track, um, you can basically, it allows you to clamp them to any piece of wood you have around. I actually have a set that I have clamped to a yardstick so that I can very easily set my radiuses when I'm, when I'm drawing out uh, arcs. The other thing that they're good for that a lot of people don't realize is you can use them for spacing. So if you want to have six inch spacing, you set your travel points at six inches and you can strike arcs just by running down a, you know, running down a line or around a curve. So if you needed to have supports every so many inches around a curve, they're really good for arcing that out. So I, again, just a, something that's in my toolbox that I, I use quite often. Tonight's neat website, and I'll put this in the chat, um, and this is a lesson in if you look hard enough on the web, you won't believe what you might find. Uh, on, the, on my layout, which is set in the 50s, I wanted to find some period stoplights from New York City. The stoplights in New York City at the time just had green and red. I somehow came across this. This is actually like a veterinarian who specializes in workhorses. You can see by the thing. But this is Willis Lamb's traffic signal collection. And uh, it's just phenomenal what this guy has put on this site. And here's one that I was looking at. He has all these old ads, old catalogs and ads. And uh, here you can see that not only do they have stoplights like here, you know, when you get the, the full uh, stuff. So, you know, this will be easy. I plan on 3D printing these. Um, but uh, there's street signs. There's all kinds of stuff that you can find. So just something really cool. Like I say, I'll put the uh, link into the chat because uh, it's just a really cool place to, to kind of poke around and get it, get some inspiration. So that was uh, that's tonight's thing. Next week, we'll be measuring up with rulers, scales, and squares. <laughs>